Hi, my name is Steve and this is 10 Minute Tech. And what I'll be looking at today is the Framework laptop. Now I've already gone through the assembly and the rest of the video prior to filming this intro so I can give you my straight up opinion right away. Overall, I think it's well constructed and it's worth about a thousand bucks is what you'll end up paying for a laptop like this. Do not have the maximum amount of performance you may get if you pay that amount of money for other pre-built laptops. But what you gain is the modularity of the IO and funding a company that really is going out on a limb to try something new. And that level of innovation is really important in the laptop industry, which has generally not changed for a long time. So overall, I bought this to support Framework because I like what they're doing. What they provided was an overall very solid product that I'll be happy to use as my daily laptop. Let's get into the video. I purchased the DIY model with the i5. So it's the cheapest one they have. Um, with the RAM, and I think a solid state drive included, and then a, a couple of expansion ports. So let's jump right in and take a look. So not a whole lot of packing material in there, so it did probably bounce around quite a bit, but hopefully that's okay. Um, if any of this has information on it. This is exactly, uh, I guess, all the parts that I ordered. And everything's itemized on here. And it looks like just what I ordered. So that's good. I did order the power adapter. So this is cool because a lot of us may have lots of power adapters from various other pieces of equipment that you've bought. So it looks like it's a standard, it has some standard outputs, uh, three amps, it'll go up to 60 watts at 20 volts. So if you have something that is compatible, um, might be type C port, uh, let's take a look, but you don't have to purchase this. And that's the whole thing behind the the framework laptop. This is a standard AC power, but it does have that three prong. Uh, let's take a look at what's in here. Okay, so it is just a type C power brick that's gonna convert your 110 in the United States to type C, and that'll have all the various voltages that'll come on USB. And it comes with a type C cable. Um, I don't know off the top of my head, but this is a pretty thick cable, uh, so it, I don't know what, what USB standard it complies with, but that's something I'll be looking into in a little bit. Let's set that aside. I do like that it, everything comes in what seems to be kind of a uh, reusable type of packaging. These are all recycled cardboard packagings, and that's, that's kind of nice to see. I don't need a bunch of printed plastics All right, so those are all the accessories I got. I got uh, Type-C. I think there's another Type-C in here. I think you do need one of these to charge the unit since it charges through USB. So if you get one of these, you need to get at least one Type-C. I think you could probably plug into the Type-C connector inside of the expansion slot, but you might as well just pick up one of these. I got a micro SD card reader, HDMI, a USB Type-A just in case and a display port. Now you can't use all of these at once. It looks like I got six, uh, but you can use four. So you can swap out what you might need. I'll need to use at least one USB port, but I may also want to put another USB type C for other devices, perhaps an HDMI and then the type A, and that would be my setup. Let's see what else we have. So this looks like the Wi-Fi card. Um, this doesn't come with anything on it. So the Wi-Fi card here is to get Wi-Fi on the system. I'll have to see if the antenna is built in. Um, I'm hoping that it is because it doesn't look like this came with the antennas, but there are antenna ports on the Wi-Fi card. And I believe it's an Intel Wi-Fi 6E. So that's good. This is the RAM that I picked out to come with it. Uh, two eight gigabyte, 3200 sodiums. And it looks like these came from Crucial. And I don't remember off the top of my head exactly how much these were through Framework's website. That's something I'll put up on the screen and post, but I have a feeling you could probably buy your own RAM, put it in there just fine without, without paying the markup that they're probably getting. And that's the whole point of this. And let's look at the actual laptop itself. And 
they've done some nice design work to make this feel nice. Um, the cardboard's actually really thick, so that's oddly satisfying to open. It's a little stuck there. All right, so there's the laptop. A single tool, a manual, and I think that's it. The rest of this is just packaging. So yeah, there's nothing else in here. I would say that the uh, the packaging's pretty thick. I don't know if that's uh, you know wasteful at all, considering that they went through the effort of using this inexpensive recycled packaging for the rest, but that's fine. So let's take a look at the actual laptop itself. It should come with no expansion slots in it. So there's our four expansion slots. It looks like these buttons maybe are how they lock or release. I'll have to look into that. These QR codes are cool. It looks like you can just take a picture of them and it'll bring you to the link on their website. Large trackpad, chiclet style keys. The keyboard does feel pretty good. Um, pretty strong with regard to deck flex. There's not a whole lot of flex in the laptop. Um, and I don't think it's charged, so nothing's gonna happen now. The screen's bezels are pretty small. And it looks like you can actually shut off mechanically the microphone and the camera directly from here. So. That's nice to see, especially in the recent times where we've been using our cameras and microphones more often for having social contact with others, uh, school or work or whatever. Overall, I think it is well worth the 749 MSRP before you do any add-ons and about a thousand bucks after you get the stuff that you need. You need to buy RAM still, you need to buy storage, maybe need to buy Wi-Fi, whether or not you purchase it with it, and then the additional IO. You do need to purchase that separately. In my case, I also bought a charger and it came to about 1,050 bucks for this i5 model. In general, I think it's well constructed. I think the general form factor is very good. It's relatively thin, considering that it's fully customizable. A lot of devices that are fully customizable are not so thin. And I like the screen. The screen is bright. They claim over 400 nits and I like the aspect ratio. It's a little bit out of a resolution, but the taller screen does allow you to have widescreen content on top where you can have your editing bars or timeline on the bottom and be able to still see it on full, full scale. So that's nice. Overall, I am looking forward to using this in the future and I am really happy to kind of have the opportunity to check this out. I did buy this on my own during the third batch pre-order. So anything that's in this particular model may change in future batches. Uh, as far as downsides, one thing that I would like to see is a little bit of a difference in how the I.O. is handled. So the way it's handled right now, you get four ports, and that's not really very many ports, especially if you need two of them to be USB. One of them is going to be a charger, and now you're left with really only one port for to do anything extra with. So I would like if they maybe had a module that can have two USB Type-C ports on one of these kind of dongles, and that would allow you to use it as a charger on one side, and then maybe your two extra ports, those will be your USBs, and you can use a dock or some kind of breakout dongle from there. And then you still have two left open for maybe HDMI and an SD card reader. So that's just a thought. I don't know if there's any limitations on how they've designed this to be able to do that, but otherwise the performance is about what you'd expect from a laptop. I didn't try any games, and I'm not looking to really play games on this. I have got a desktop PC that's used for gaming for that, but it's got a four core eight thread processor and it scored about a, like a 4770K under battery. And to just think about the amount of improvement that has occurred since a few generations ago, that was maybe 2015 or 2016 when those were popular, it's pretty good amount of performance for a laptop on battery. If you want to game, maybe, if they have Thunderbolt, which is not officially, which is not officially compatible with this, but I've heard rumor that if you plug in the Thunderbolt device, you may or may not get connectivity. And if that's the case, 
an external GPU attached to this could make this your your whole rig and maybe even an external monitor and you're ready to go especially if you're playing esports types of games that do not require more than four cores and a lot of games don't right now at least if you want more like this let me know down in the comments and i'll see you next time